boost, which is important but can be stressful. Um, we wanted to give you something to watch and listen to today that was not stressful. Uh, my friend Tyler Williams from the Head and the Heart asked me about doing a drum lesson and suggested we do this live on Instagram, but we thought we'd go a little bigger and better and make it something you could archive and watch at a later date in case you couldn't tune in today. Um, so this is, uh, in short, just the kind of conversation that us drummers have. I'm sure a lot of musicians have, but we can't always be face to face as in as is the case right now when we're all sheltering in place. Like I hope you are. Uh, so we wanted to bring this live to you. And uh, without any further ado, we're going to get into a lesson. Uh, we're going to open it up for comments a little later. But I'd like to introduce Tyler Williams from the Head and the Heart. What's up, guys? Hey, Jason. How are you? Hey, good. You know, what's <laughs> funny is it feels like no one else is here but you and I right now. It's the beauty of this whole stream quarantine thing, you know? That's what it is. That's a good, that's almost an album title right there. <laughs> stream quarantine? Yeah, right? <laughs> so look, I want to get into it. I mean, we talked about this a little bit before when I was in Nashville only a few weeks ago. Yes. Same time the tornado hit. Uh, I was over at your house for dinner, uh, what, the very next day, and we were talking yeah. about that kind of tragedy, and now we have a whole nother one to deal with on a much larger scale. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a rough month, especially for Nashville, but um, hopefully we get through this and we can all get back out on the road and see each other at shows, you know? That'd be nice. Yeah, I know. That's my favorite place to see you is on the stage <laughs> and at shows, along with a lot of other great players out there. Sure. Uh, well, you know, you would ask me about some stuff that you could work on. I'm constantly asking other players, what are you working on? I mean, you just you just stumped me five minutes ago when we did a little test session and I had to really stop and think <laughs> about what I was playing. So the goal here for people watching is just to give you some ideas of things to work on. Um, they may seem simple. Matter of fact, we're gonna start simple. So the concept is easy to read cool. and understand. And then we're going to um, maybe advance a little bit more and you know now is the time clearly for all of us to be um, finding uh, a lot of peace in our practice and bettering ourselves so that when it is time to go back out on the road we've we've done the work and so that's what Tyler awesome. and I are, are doing today so let's do it let's do it all right we're going to start we're going to jump right in we're going to start with a real simple beat a money beat this is all you need you only need one song you know one beat to play a song really uh, <laughs> And what we're going to do is I'm going to play a couple bars, and then Tyler's going to play a couple bars. Perfect. Hopefully, a lot of people have said, I could do that. I already got <laughs> this. What am I going to learn here today? Yes. Well, we will promise you. All right, so typically as drummers, we keep time on the hi-hat. Uh, the natural way, a lot of drummers will keep time using downstrokes and upstrokes, or we accent time. It's real calm. You see a lot of players doing it. Some people don't even realize they're doing it. When I first joined Death Cab, I was doing that, and my bandmates asked me to not do that. They didn't want accents. They wanted straight time. They just wanted... Which almost harkened back to like more of a, a stole R and B like an Al yeah. approach. Yeah. And I you know, I I guess I forgot about that. Like that like not everybody wants to hear accent. <laughs> and so they really made me the band made me strip back some of my sort of technique and approach. Yeah. Uh, but in the end I, I think that was a lesson by itself. Like considering playing the hi hat different ways. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing we did, we played time, you got the beat down. Uh, I want you to do it again without accenting the downstrokes, but just try and keep straight time using the shoulder of the stick on the shoulder of the hat. Go yeah. for it. Perfect. Now I want you to emphasize the accents or the downbeats, which would be the quarter notes. If you're going to count this out, it would be one and two and three and four and, okay? So real heavy on the accents. Go for that. Go 
Cool. And that totally changed the field for me rather than digging straight in. It really yeah, yeah. It creates more space between the backbeats. So now what I do a lot of the time to change the feel of a song is I will play the opposite of the downbeats and only accent the upbeat. So it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and. Or if I play it on the kit, it's like this. Two, three, four. Give that a shot. Perfect. Okay, so the challenge isn't just playing it. The challenge is getting to feel good no matter how you do it. Yeah. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. In order to really line things up as a player, if you're just playing, you're guessing and you're using your ears, and that's great. But if you really want to commit to what each limb is doing, you got to be able to sing those limbs. So right. you may blaze right through this. I hope <laughs> you do, because we can move forward to the harder stuff. Uh, but we'll what see. I want you to do right now is just sing your accent. So on the downbeat version, you're going to sound sing chick every time you accent only, not the in-between with that beat. So it's going to sound like yep. this. Two, three, four. Chick, 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 chick. Give it a shot. Yeah. Perfect. You're made for this. You're professional. You must play in a band who doesn't need anything, uh, right? Uh, okay. I need work, man. No, we all do. Okay, next, you're going to sing the kick and the snare part yeah. like this. Two, three, four. Boom. Pop. Boom, boom, pop. Boom, pop. Boom, boom, pop. Go yeah. for it. How are the boom booms? Were they easy to sing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I don't know if I was in the right key, but they were all right. You know? <laughs> no, it was a good key. All right, so far you're good. Again, this is easy because every downbeat is with your leg. Yeah. They're both drop. We're going to switch this camera view just for the folks at home here. Your leg drops, hand drops. That's easy with downbeats. Okay, now what we're gonna do is turn those accents around and play the upbeats. Same thing, we're gonna go two, three, four. Except you're gonna sing chick for the accent, so it sounds like this, two, three, four. Chick, 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 chick. Was it a little more, was it more difficult or was it just as easy as the first one? I think I was like focusing on like where it was being placed a little bit uh, more. I think placing the accent while singing it, you kind of like, you want to line them up a little bit tighter. Um, right. Like you were saying, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense. So All right. I've actually never, I've never done that before and it feels pretty natural actually. I like it. So here's the next challenge with the cycle. You want to sing every part that you're playing. So let's take the upbeat accent and cycle through. I'll show you an example. I'm going to sing only the sounds that I'm playing. So the first thing I'll sing is the accents on the hat. Then I'll sing the bass drum. Then I'll sing, actually, I'll go top down. Top, snare drum, bottom. So I'll sing the hat accent and the snare drum and the bass drum. And this is what I would do with a lot of students, especially those that don't already have some level of independence. You're doing great, though. Yeah. You're making me look bad as a teacher, actually. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so here's what the cycle would sound like. One, two, three, four. Check, 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 check. Pop, 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 pop. Boom, 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 boom. Go for it. And the idea is to transition from each one without hesitation. Right. Okay, let me try that. Could be, it's a bit of a tongue twister, you know? Psych. <laughs> Here we go. Two, three, four. Hear my booms? Was I was my bass drum boom? Your booms were booming, dude. <laughs> so okay. Next thing we're gonna do is this is all pretty simple with a with a beat that's very familiar to you nothing you haven't played a thousand times right yeah. 
Right. Um, and you already have good independence with this. All right, let's transition to, uh, let's transition to a, a feel in six, okay? Yeah. So no accents, you're gonna go. If I was to count, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. No accents, straight, digging in, hi hat, chick, 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 chunk, chunk, yeah, chunk. Yeah. Okay, right don't sing, you don't even need to sing time. Let's just get in the feel of, of playing that six. Okay. Let's start. Let's try it out. Perfect. Now apply the accent theory of downbeat yeah. and then upbeat. And I'm not even going to give you an example. I want you to just go for <laughs> it. And again, we're not, actually, I will say this. You're not going to do this. You're not going to go. You're going to do this. <laughs> Down and up with that six feel. Oh, man. See, that's, let's, that's intriguing. Let's do this. This let's is intriguing. <laughs> All right, let me see how I can uh, do that. Is that right for the uh That was it. It took you right. a measure or two and then yeah, you yeah. and then you heard it. Okay. Like the, the biggest difference between trying to play something uh out of the gates and you know yeah. Well, how can I put it? If you hear it before you play it and you really think about it, like sometimes I take away a few limbs. So if I were you and playing that and it wasn't coming together right away, which you got it, but if I was having a hard time. I might take away the snare or the bass drum or the snare drum. Okay? Or. Yeah. All right. Jason, that's, that feels like a classic Death Cab beat. It is. Yeah. It yeah. Is. You're, you're picking up the nugget. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So, and swear to God, everybody, we didn't set this up. So <laughs> that is close to a song called Lightness off of yeah. Transatlanticism. Yes. And it's not, it's not the downbeats that I'm playing. I swear to God, folks, this isn't scripted. The man just has good ears. <laughs> All right. So the beat that I just played, or that you just played, or we played separately, The accents are on the up, and that's lightness. Right. And I, actually, I actually use uh, like like multi rods to mellow, out, to mellow out the sound a little huh. bit. Yeah. And I play it on the upbeat, so it's like this: one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's that's kind of what I wanted to arrive at. Is just talking about how accents can make a beat feel totally different. Yeah. Because if yeah. I if I vary between the three, you know, no accents. To down beats. To up beats. I have a physical reaction where when it's yeah. when no accents, I'm thinking this, like dropping on the one and the four. Yeah. And when there's downbeats, my head plays the eighth notes or the, yeah, yeah be, I guess it'd be the, the quarters. And then on the upbeats, it has a whole different lift and the yeah. interplay between the instruments and how you accent things in your hi-hat goes a long, long ways. And it's often the kind of thing that people don't pick up on, but they should. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as drummers and as other musicians. I think the same thing goes if you're playing guitar and you're playing down, if you're a guitar player strumming down beats, then the, the drummer could play up beats in the hi-hat and there would be a cool interplay. That's yeah. how the song Stole Me's Body Works. Yeah. So I, I bet you Amazing. do some of this in your own catalog as well, but maybe you've never thought yeah. about it that way, or maybe you have, I don't know. I, I think it's it's always interesting to kind of hear another perspective on, on the creative process, and especially uh, I think you do accents so well um that like 
you said on lightness or soul meets body it really drives the song forward and um i think when we were talking about how do you uh how do you make rock and roll or like music that's uh rooted in pop song structure how do you make it feel newer or uh different from maybe what's been done in the past and i definitely think that that accent trick is it's special you know it makes you want to dance a little bit you know? <laughs> that's the idea it's yeah. one of those things behind the drums that uh i think can cause a physical reaction yeah. and often you know in a recording studio situation if you're if you're playing time you know um Those are two totally different feeling beats, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, there's some technique involved in playing it at, at faster tempos, which is something anybody can work on on a practice pad, especially at this time, yeah. especially if you don't have a drum set. I mean, you and I are very lucky to have some kits and a place to play. Um, very lucky, very privileged. Though yeah. we're unlucky in that we can't go and play for people right now. <laughs> that is but, that is the bummer. Yeah. Um, you know what? Though I think. If anyone has any questions, especially for Tyler, like I've been the one doing all the talking at this point in time. Um, I mean, I see requests. I see lots of yes. I see my brain spins spider webs inside my head. <laughs> um, uh, you know what? I have a question for you. Sure. Will you will you play me your favorite head in the heart beat uh, like, out, out of the catalog? Yeah. Um, there's this. Let me think about this. There's this beat at the end of another story off of our second record that I kind of do this like weird, like migrate over to the hi hat um, to finish a, like a roll situation. Um, Let me see it. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like. That's amazing. So how long did it take you to come up with that part? Did, did people have to wait for you? Was it the kind of thing where you were just in a studio and, or was it uh, something that somebody programmed that led you to that part? It was actually, well, yeah, it was kind of, um, it was a funny situation where we had written the song kind of in one sitting um, in the studio and hadn't really um, thought too much about it, but I knew, I know I was doing this, you know, just the, the double notes on the on the snare. And then I tried to overdub the hi-hat part. So I was hearing that in my head, but I couldn't figure out how to pull it off live yet. And then I think when we hit the road uh, on that record, it, it just kind of came to me like, I should just figure out how to get my hand to do that, you know? <laughs> and um, throughout tour, and I think this is, a, this is a good, you know, just like lesson from touring is that, you actually change the songs and they become more lived in and you feel them a little bit deeper at the end of a tour than you did when you first released the record. I, I always love like the way that my drum parts change throughout the album cycle, you know, as we're on that's the road. For, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 Playing them every day. Yeah. I think that's, that's what makes going to see a live show so great. For right? sure. Seeing things and hearing things a little bit differently than what you remember when the record first hit your ears. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. There are some questions. Tyler, are you playing a Q kit? Uh, this is actually a uh, CNC, which um, I love those guys so much. I've I've been with them for uh, I guess pretty much since the band put out their first record. So uh, I play CNCs, uh, Zildjian cymbals, big first stakes, and DW hardware, and. Um, they're all really, really great people. Cheers to all those companies right now that are yes. that are doing everything they can to stay afloat, like so many of us. Um, yeah. I am playing a Gretsch USA Custom in a custom color of green, two different greens that I pleaded that they make for me. Um, yeah. And I'm playing Zildjian Cymbals, Vic Four Sticks, DW Hardware. Um, but there was another question in here. Someone asked me like about Summer Skin and ben had talked about how i'd originally um sent him the beat and that's that's the way that uh some some death cab songs get written i will just fill a folder full of drum loops because oh, we, cool. can't always, we can't always be in the same space and uh that that summer skin beat had a 
tambourine on the hi-hat. Snare drum was tuned pretty low and sloppy like a marching drum. It was a really unique snare drum that I have on a rack over there, but I, it's too far away to pull out. But the beat was... And it was really just that so repeated cool. over and over again. It was a, it was a three bar phrase. It's a little faster live, but the thing that makes it, I think, is the roll is a yeah is like a sort of a faded roll. It doesn't it doesn't crescendo, it decrescendos, almost like it runs out of energy. Yeah. All right, and again, upbeat hi hat, basically. How awkward would it be to be like? Yeah. And that doesn't we're just plod it, along. It, it, it doesn't way. dance, you know, it no doesn't dance. <laughs> right? So again, yeah. that, that circles back around to some of the things that we talked about. I also like, you know, how that role, there's kind of that imperfection to it where it, like you're getting this like very it's very um you know like regimented, but it also has this kind of swagger to it that do, it doesn't necessarily just sound like a, a standard drum roll, you know, like you were talking about. I think it, mm. it, it adds that little bit of like, you know, uh, special, special quality to it. Man, and it kind of drags, you know, it's cool. That's, that's me trying to get there. Me I love it. Keep, keep up with the beat. I love so, it. Um, somebody asked if we memorize our drum beats from the catalog. Like we have to, right? It's kind of muscle memory. I mean, uh, right. No, that's a good way to put it. I mean, I, yeah. look, I, I think I would get fired. I think that yeah. all my bandmates have daggers that they just yes, shoot from yes. their eyes. <laughs> and there's a, there's a definite fear. I'm more worried about getting up and playing my parts right in a band practice than I am getting up on a stage. Yes, very <laughs> true. I'm also that way. I mean, very true. I also try and practice a lot, which comes in waves right now. It, it's funny, at the, at the beginning of this whole quarantine, I was doing a whole lot of just focused work with my family and spending time with my kids and I, I didn't touch the drums because I was like, well, shit, I'm, I can't play you for a while. So <laughs> I'm just going to do some other things that make me feel good. Yeah. But I am, I am really starting to value the time to be able to dig in uh, to drums. And I, I feel like you are too. Otherwise you wouldn't, yeah. you know, suggested doing this at all. This actually is the first day that I've had these drums set up at my place. See? Um, and it's, you know, like just talking to you about this and trying to figure out how I'm going to get this all set up. And it's just been a catalyst to learning and to pushing forward with like, you know, when, when you're in your off time, trying to get that work in and trying to feel good about creating parts. And, you know, it's been, we're in a very similar situation where we're all kind of spread out as a band. Um, you know, I think you guys are all a little closer, but we're kind of like different coasts and, um, you know, feels some, like that for yeah. us, even though yeah. on the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, but you're right. It's like we all um, we all have an opportunity to practice right now. And I mean, yeah. I would hope that I know that you and I talked about this a few weeks ago, and you probably spent more time in your drums in the past week than you have. I'm just taking a wild guess. Um, well, of course, you have a newborn baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> five months, five months old today or yesterday? Uh, yesterday, five months Amazing. old. Amazing. So, yeah. Thank she's you. Beautiful. Thank you very but, much. Yeah, I think you made a very valid point in saying that, like, we need to do this. I'm going to point to your screen. Yeah. We need, we need to do this with uh, each other as much as possible right now. And there's a lot of really qualified drum teachers out there or music teachers in general. Yeah. And I know that people don't have a lot of extra money. People are holding on to what they have. But we need to balance out. Um, we need to balance out inspiration and thinking positively with, you know, staying secure and staying prepared and you know preserving ourselves in in all of it but i i do think that this has inspired me to sit down with you and remember that this kind of exchange is important yeah and i, I know that after this i'm gonna i'm gonna be on the phone or facetime <laughs> with, with with other players and drummers who maybe have watched or who didn't yeah. see it and suggest the same thing to them i, I would and love I, to i would love to watch you uh with another drummer as well and see <laughs> see Likewise. how that transitions you know and like the way that you teach someone else and different techniques i don't know i, I love this whole process and um i i 
you're, you're, you're so good to do this with me. So thank you so much. Oh man. man of course. I, I'm trying to find some more, wait, 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 some more questions that we can answer here. Yeah. Both of you are in bands where you serve the song as one should, but when you wait to just let it all out, what's your go-to song? Oh, to play, to play along to. All right, what's the what's the ape shit, Tyler? Oh right. my God, man! You don't need to play it right now. I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just trying to say. Um, question. There's this really cool. Uh, you're all. It's it's so far away from like the music we make, but I think it's so good. Uh, uh, there's a, a really great Deftones beat that I always love to pull out. It's um, this beat for this song called Digital Bat. And it, or no, not digital bat, RX clean, I believe. So it's kind of like this. It goes. Like, I love how it flips back and forth um, from the downbeat to the upbeat, kind of. Um, so that's, what? I kind of love listening to like some hard, hard stuff and playing, playing drums to that because I just don't get to have that experience with my band, you know? Uh, what about you, Jason? Um, what about me? What song do I love to play live? Um, Bixby Canyon Bridge is a is a pretty fun one for me because I tend to hit pretty hard at the end and test the eardrums of my bandmates. <laughs> um, Transatlanticism too is, I mean, as simple as the part is, the end of that song is I try and save up every last ounce of energy to hit hard. Yeah. But other than that, what Sarah said is probably my favorite of all of the entire catalog, just because of the feel and the the diversity and the and the different types of technique that I need to use and employ. It's just a real challenge. And yeah. at the same time, I I would hope and feel like it's a musical approach, not just like a bunch of drum trickery. Yeah. Um. But man, what else can we? Were we talking about our catalogs? Because <laughs> I just went full death there. I was just like. Oh yeah, no. I I asked the question was about your (laughs) oh my catalog. Yeah. Uh yeah. I mean, I think um I was I you know it's always like throughout the set you look forward to certain songs you know as you see them coming up on the set list you're like I can't wait to for that moment you know and I think um, something my band tries to do really well is create these moments on stage where each person gets like this kind of time to shine Mm -hmm. in in different songs and I think um, Rivers and Roads is definitely one for me. Um, there's a song called Shake that we play that uh, is off our second record that I don't know just that's probably the hardest that we get in the set and it just feels good to kind of let it out after being very minimalist and subdued and serving the song for the majority of the the first half of the set you know so those two are kind of uh, highlights for me um, I also see uh... I see a question about someone's wondering about a, uh, they have a four year old who wants to play drums. Do you think my electronic kit would be a good way for them to learn without the noise in small places? Absolutely. I think that uh, it, there's probably more electronic kits being sold than acoustic kits these days. It's yeah. without a doubt a good way. Any, any way that you can get sticks in your hands and play along the music and feel joy is a win, a total win. Yeah. Um, I think. I- I think I had a practice pad for like a year, you know, um, just one one pad, and I was just playing on that and playing along to records just on one pad. And I think even that alone just kickstarted this like passion for for hitting stuff with sticks. So. And here you are. <laughs> here here we are. Here we are. Yeah, no, absolutely. I started on a pad too. Um, I still work with a lot of students on pads only because they're more concerned with honing in uh, technique before they get behind the drums. Uh, but again, there's a lot of teachers, there's a lot of courses, um, there's a lot of people that are now accessible on Zoom um, or some other platform uh, or just Skype or FaceTime. I mean, the, the list is long. I think if you just Google drum lessons, you'll, you'll online lessons, you'll come up with some of the biggest ones that have really well-designed curriculum. Or if you can reach out through Instagram or other social media outlets, you can find somebody. But I, look, I just want to close with the point that this is important, and again, I know that everyone is is doing what they can to stay positive, but this will help that, you know, investigating, reaching out to friends, and Tyler and I will probably do this again. 
and it may be in front of people it, it may not um, i know we'll do this again yeah but uh, don't forget to reach out to the people that inspire you and look for opportunities even if it's once a month or whatever you can do during this time and it doesn't take a ton of gear it really can just be a conversation i think you said it very well thank All you right. jason so hey thank you everybody for checking in i'm sorry we didn't get uh, around to more questions but that was the time we had a lot of today thanks so much for tuning in if you missed this broadcast or if you know anyone that wanted to see it that was asleep overseas it will be available as a link online on both ecfc and the head and heart social all right, everybody. Stay safe. Stay safe. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jason. Love All right. You, buddy. Take care. Love you too. Bye bye.